Oh my goodness, we're live. Well, let's see here. What kind of crazy options do I have without Zoom? Not much. Really can't be doing adding stuff. No, that's okay. I just wanted to say hi and see if I can't drop in a couple of things that someone might find interesting. Uh, let's see, I think this is the wrong, oh, I know what I can do. So the question I had for folks out there, hey, JK, cheers, mate, is um, what would be parts? Right, what would be a part? What would be a hint, a clue? And what does it mean to do the work? Fora says you have to do the work. Well, what does that mean? Um, what would be doing the work? Um, let's see here, I'm trying to copy and paste a thing. Put this over here, then put it in the window for people to take a look. I mean, what would be, bang, it's character. Let's try this. I don't think this is going to work. Let's try it. Wow, really strange. So the question which I keep asking and no one, I get nothing but blank looks on faces is would, no, this is really not working. Would the number 42, hey, 3D Bronze, howdy. Your name is perfect. Um, yeah, all's good. I have a place to live for a while. This is good out here in Nevada City. It's nice. Um, they haven't put me on drugs yet. <laughs> but uh, all is good in Nevada City. Hey, um, you know, 3D bronze. I mean, isn't isn't that the fact that Forrest has got it in a bronze chest? Isn't the bronze chest in itself? A hint, since there is, what, far as we know, one silver thing, and then it's full of gold, and then the box itself is bronze. I mean, that right there kind of screams Olympics. Hello, Richard. I mean, that screams Olympics right away. And if you think about it, Jesse Owens, the great Olympiad, his, the one who came in second place to Jesse Owens in 1936, is... Jackie Robinson, brother. So that his number is 42. So, oh, well, nice to be seen. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice to be seen. Doing well out here in uh, Nevada City. That's right. I thought I would uh, go on here. What is it? It's going on lunchtime. And I and I keep uh, trying to bring up some 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 different thoughts on how, um, for instance, let me try and copy and paste this Peanuts character. So I got a Peanuts character that is number five. Um, now that's kind of that's a big reach, but why would you go to Peanuts? Peanuts, as in you know Charles Schultz, uh, Snoopy. Uh, uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. It was a, uh, you know, baseball. All the things that are around Charlie Brown are things that we, you know, even marbles. Even those are the things that we've seen in Charlie Brown stuff. I don't think the bronze chest is perfect vessel. To, of course, it's a perfect vessel. Absolutely, because it won't tarnish. It'll last forever. Ideal. That's why they've been made through history. But. So the question then is, is so you're saying that that's not a hint. So I think it's real easy to say that these things don't matter and then these things do. That in itself would be what bias is. That's what uh, Jack was talking about. I find that people don't even look at the book because Forrest said somewhere, all you need is the poem. Well, maybe all you need is the poem in the last 100 feet, 200 feet. Um, 
you know, there's this grand, how do I put this? Huge assumptions that are that are made, um, and I'm and I find that they are extremely much like putting a fence around an idea. You're containing it. You're not you're not expanding all it could be. It could you know home of Brown not just be one thing. Um, for instance, home of Brown easily can be Charlie Brown. And then the home easily could be, um, can be that right there. So what you're seeing is a character that's in peanuts, right? So you're looking at nine five four seven two. Well, that number could very much be the last three digits of where you are standing while you're looking at an image of a dog. And so would that not be below the home of Brown? So you're actually seeing Snoopy in a. I mean, it's a. Uh, I don't know. I guess I've been beat down so much that I. I uh, did Finn help Jack? Well, it's a good question. I probably started that rumor. <laughs> um, and that was based on the limited information that we're getting from Jack. It sounds like, oh, I spent a couple of weeks, figured it out, and went and picked it up. And if that's, you know, that was, you know, my immediate interpretation, I found that extremely insulting, my intelligence. You know, I know I'm not the brightest uh, uh, tool in the box, but uh, the nothing is as it seems. And I could easily be at be like looking at page 18 and 19 and extrapolating that he's referring to the periodic table just by saying bronze refers you to the periodic table in that there is tin, copper, and cobalt in making bronze at varying of degrees of amount. So the very weight of the chest itself, 42, I thought was thinking outside the box and is a big hint about Wyoming. <laughs> I mean, that's what 42 is, is it takes you to the border of, well, well basically the border up. Well, sli slightly between Colorado and, and that. Where's another hint about 42? Well, what, you know, the, the, the saying, uh, uh, up ship creek without a paddle, that comes from John Dos Pesos who was who had written the 42nd parallel that's part of the trilogy the 42nd parallel is a trilogy and upshed creek is part of that and i do believe mash is another spin off of uh, of that uh, um, i don't know just seeing what he thought about the ending of the chess now uh, dal doesn't like the ending who does there's no validation. We get no information. Um, um, there was no grand celebration. There was no finding. There's so much we don't know that it creates people to, to generate all kind of freaking ideas, including me. How could you not? <clears throat> right. And then I've asked Jack and I'm sure Jack has been asked. Um, nothing up paint Creek. No rush up Paint Creek. Right on, Bill. Bill, sounds like you got a girlfriend. Outstanding. Way to go. Step away from this nonsense and go hang out with her. Um, the uh, the very number that, that the, the weight of the chest, the bronze chest, right? Full of gold. Now think about it. He's putting in little little stones of gold into this box. He could have made it weigh anything, but he's he's gone to 42. And 42 takes you to the Wyoming border. Not, I mean, Casper is in the 42 latitude, uh, which is interesting. Fenway Park, coincidentally, is on the 42nd parallel. Now, how does 42 and Fenway Park come in together? Um, section 42, row 37, seat 21 is where the longest hit in baseball at Fenway Park, 500 feet, uh, lands on seat 21. Now, what's the relevance of seat 21? Well, that would be 
chapter 21, Father on the Banco. So if you're, if you found the blaze, look quickly down. Well, you'll notice that the one of the last words that he talks about in that very short chapter, I mean, it's just a page and a picture. What do you see? You see, you see his father sitting on the, the bumper of the uh, Model A or T or whatever it is, the truck, in front of the home, the house, the home, like in home plate. The roof has the same shape as home plate. Um, there's a relevance to this, you know. Um, the 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 point is is that it's going to be. I mean, look up Ted Williams. I believe Williams is a key word, and if you did the work, and what does that mean? you would see that um, the word Williams is quickly spelled out in the lack of postmarks. So what is, what is my saying here? I'm saying from home plate, and there's other indications that, the, the, you know, the next page, I believe the, it's on page 28 or 7, where he talks about MMMMMM. Uh, M -m 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 -m. That was mom making uh, uh, jelly sandwiches or pineapple upside down, whatever they imagined, you know, their, their imagination is what made these things delicious. Well, that's the same as the big monster wall. There's as many M's as there are M's on the monster wall when you look at the key. You care, you know what? K Pro's got nothing to do with you and your girl, man. If she's beautiful, which I do believe you did this cool freaking thing with the this this beautiful woman and you stuck her face on all kinds of stuff. You're very clever, funny art, Bill. Outstanding, right on. Um excellent, you know. I mean, I really uh I think that's outstanding. So kudos to you. A woman would definitely change my attitude about life right now. <laughs> so so I guess the, the question is, is what is, you know, um, what is a clue and a hint? I mean, do, do page numbers matter? The lack of page numbers matter? Do chapters matter? I mean, these are all things that are just laying around and takes you quickly away from bias. For instance, page 38 is my favorite. Excuse me, page 39. You'll notice on the periodic table, the letter Y is number 39. Its heavy load or atomic weight is 88.906. Well, now, if that letter played a part in this, as in Ys, and I don't think there's just one Ys, I think you can have the letter YS and be Ys. So, there would be there would be evidence there would be undeniable evidence that that was true and what do we find what do we find on page 39 would there is there any evidence you know would there be something that would get your head to spin around and go wow that seems that seems kind of important pictures we're seeing a mule uh, definitely playing cowboys and Indians. He wants the pistol, a kind of an incredulous face. Here's June. We got all three of them in this lovely little triad here. Well, what happens on this right over here? Well, oddly enough, on page 39, Mr. District Attorney, as in we're paying attention to radio shows, fascinating in itself, um, the Lone Ranger would be one of the big ones, I imagine, around that time. But nonetheless, the eighth word is eight o'clock. And we're in the eighth chapter. So that's a big herd of eights, 88. And we know 88 is important because that's when he got cancer. So we know that 88 is relevant to something well, well, somehow. At least we have this this number 39 tied to the periodic table right there where it says Y. Now, doesn't that seem like not bias, but an actual fact in reality? You are not just, you know, looking 
looking for a water temperature. I mean, the opposite of bias is precision and fact. And that would be the very definition of it, right? I mean, look at the look at page 15, which I thought was the most important page, one of the most important pages in the book. There's no page number, but yet this is page 15. And what do you know on the periodic table is P15. Uh, would line 30, there's, there's, would the 30th word matter on here? Since the atomic weight is 30.974. Well, there's that 7-4 again. Remember that? So I wonder, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Letter A from the bottom up. So what is it from the top down? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Near A. Does this mean absolutely nothing? Who knows, man? I always knew that, I always knew that there was 24 words from the word so to steps. So now as I sit here past midnight besides my juniper fire, reflecting back to the year, to the year when my awareness took its first few steps. FF, first few steps. Very interesting. So if that's 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 29 is book. And then A. A, by the way, letter A shows up on page 4. As in A is on 6. No, A is on 4. W is on six. A and W, five in the middle. Like mama and papa burgers. So all I'm saying is, is what's a hint? You know, is 42 a hint? Is the number of words a, a hint beyond just reading the text? Because when you start counting things, you get away from your idea of what a warm water is. I mean, somebody peeing in the creek is warm water. So, I don't know. Cannibals. Yikes. 38th parallel. Yeah, 38 is way, way below the 42nd. Bill's got a whole thing around, around his the men expedition, Rock, Rockies, Fremont. Don't disagree. Very interesting. But... We know the box weighs 42 pounds, and that was very intentional because he's putting gold stones in there to get it to that weight. Is it the amount of 254 stones, or is it the overall weight? Is it the empty box with the amount of gold that's in it, 22.2? I mean, that's an interesting number in itself, isn't it? I believe 22.2. And if I recall, I'm looking at the periodic table, lands on a very specific number, if I believe, I recall. Oh, I'm not seeing very good today. But it is interesting that Einsteinium is 99. Uh, AM is 95. PM is 61. Now, AM, PM... Time is something that's referred to this. AM and FM, well, that would be radio. Uh, Einsteinium is ES. Now, ES, isn't that east? So there's all kind of possibilities. Just the whole top of the periodic table, the NOF. I mean, as I have gone alone in there, that is pretty much the entire top of the periodic table. Arsenic, as, uh, there's that 74 again. Uh, as I have gone alone in there. In is a didium, which is 114, 49, the big number. I, I is iodine, 53 and 126. So if Forrest is hinting to having real important things in the poem that will get you somewhere, they have to translate to some 
some numbers. Now, isn't a periodic table an awesome grid that an archaeologist would use or a layout that an architect would use? What is Einsteinium? Einsteinium is a, uh, what do you call it, an element that they named after Einstein. What is it? Could I go over and pick it up off the ground? Hell if I know. I wouldn't be able to recognize freaking, I might be able to recognize carbon, maybe silver, maybe copper. Copper is a very green thing when you find it out in the world. Would I recognize a diamond in the rough out there? I don't, I doubt it. Came to us from Delaware. Troy Pounds, that's right. So is that taking us to Troy, the Greeks, the Romans? Is that, you know, we're looking at a very specific weight. Um, I know something that you guys should watch, and if you haven't, you want to watch the HBO documentary of Ted Williams. Ted Williams would be Forrest Fenn's hero. Not only did he, did they, um, not only did he knock a ball 500 feet to seat 21, and it's called the red seat. The red seat, as in on page 109, page 111, we have red ink printed in the book. The only places that we have that, right? So neither me in the middle makes the number that's in the middle of this important, as well as the red. Now, oddly enough, there is what's called um, a seating chart, and at seat 111, is where the arch was for the old Fenway Park. So when we see a key, a key is the bottom of a map. That is the key to the map. A key to a baseball field is also the little map that tells you where your seating chart is, right? And red seat 21, section, no, let's see, it's row 37, seat 21, section 42. So if we're looking at a bench, Father on the Banco, if you have found a bench and you are looking up at a very big pointy rock and you look down and you see said bench, you are going to assume that your quest is over. But when you look up the definition of a quest is that you've left your home and you've gone out on some great journey. So my point is, is that If you've been wise and found the blaze, I would imagine implementing the numbers you have found from wise at that section 21. Now, if that all ends up to be part of a latitude and longitude, I'm going to guess that you're going to feel like you've got crescent symbol as alchemy for silver. Uh, Long John's North Star. Now, it's interesting that North Star that is actually very, very fascinating because why are there no names of dogs in the book, right? If you are looking at rocks that are carved, now, how do I know that I'm looking at something that's actually carved? I'm standing on a slab, I'm looking at what I'm calling the blaze, and that is directly pointing at what's known as the dog star. Now that seems to me that there might be um, some interesting key to Stargate. Wow, that's fascinating. Ah, take my ass away. So point is, is that there must, and then there's Willie. And then of course he's got you know Willie and Snoopy. The drawing he has of Willie is just like Snoopy's earlier drawing. You know he's got a drawing with with the feather coming off of, uh, of Willie in that red book for the dog. And then Snoopy has got a flower over his head on his first appearance. You know he's like a which was you know representation of Woodstock. Woodstock became Snoopy's good friend because he named it after the concert. Isn't it interesting that gold, gold is 79, and that is clearly on page 15. It is the 79th word from the bottom. So I'm thinking that he's trying to tell us about, now, now Yankee Doodle Dandy is 
no place for the meek. In other words, no place for the meek, home of the brave. That's the same statement. Okay? And then that takes you quickly to Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock playing the Star Spangled Banner. And that would be Sunday, 1969, August. Right? And that is the weight of gold. Gold is 196.9. Right? And then the next number, I believe, was uh, 7, which I believe is July. And that would be, you know, the Apollo Apollo projects. My dog is Jack. There you go. Willie and Jack. What Willie? Star Spangled Banner. That's right. So right there, you've got I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy which takes you to Broadway, uh, uh, James Cagney, one of his greatest roles ever. Uh, and then Slick Willing, very funny. Um, so, so what this means is that if you make your own index table of contents, you will find that Father on the Banco, right, is chapter 20. One. Now, what I what I want to do is, you know, right on for Jack. Yay, Jack! Please someday come out and uh, tell us all about how you came to these conclusions. If we come up with, you know, and and mostly, what is the one thing that was in the box that would let us know it was found? If it was, you know going to be found after Forrest passed away. Now, I always thought Mr. Fenn, you know, was always, you know, after 80 years old, any, any, any month, day, week you survive is outstanding. Uh, it's not like, you know, heart problems or whatever he was dealing with just kind of go away. Uh, I'm sure uh, there is a lot of wanting to live as long as your wife. I'm sure there's a lot of that going on. So what, what would be the thing that was in the chest that would let the world know? Um, did you have uh, 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 the silver medal in there from uh, uh, Jackie Robinson's older brother who came in second silver in 1936? That'd be uh, an interesting artifact. Uh, your dog tags? Um, are those, in, you know, are those somehow relevant? Um, seeing how, you know, your dog was really an important animal in your life and apparently is now with Shiloh, which is great news. Um, I guess for me to, to, uh, step away from this completely like everybody else is that we want, it's just a few things to know you know, what is the home of Brown? Is the home of Brown Charlie Brown? Is it also uh, Brown versus the Board of Education? Could it just be, could it be these two things and they come into play at different scales? Bang, bang, right? Um, could it be things like that? Um, I'm, I'm looking for um, a validation of years of work and, uh, and it was a great distraction, and I needed a distraction from the shit show that is my life. And now that um, I can no longer really see the point of pursuing anything further within this, because all it'll do is uh, bring uh, heartache and more lost funds, etc., there doesn't seem to be um, a reason sitting on a Model A, sitting on the, the bumper like it's a bench, right? And then that'll jive with some uh, Norman Rockwell drawings. you notice that I opened this show with a very important Norman Rockwell. The Norman Rockwell has got the name of the truck, P.E. Pi, so Pi Pi, right? So the name of the truck that you that I was the image that I put on here is um, one of Norman Rockwell's showing perspective. And it's all based around a dog. Hey, bulldog. So I'm thinking that, what's this now? The rate that things are trickling out. There's nothing trickling out. And if it doesn't come from Jack, it's just wonderful speculation. Uh, 
um, you know, was Jack nudged into the right place? Um, uh, you know, I do not think so. While my ego wants to say, absolutely, how else could he have figured it out? I just can't, you, I just, that's not fair to say. Um, um, you know, where there's some, was forced in touch with Jack's father and then Jack got his emails and there was something from there. No, has Jack, you know, Jack, Jack apparently was alone when he went out there to find this. So there's no second party leaking any information. There's no, um, there's no information at all. Uh, do, do I think Shiloh has been to this special place with Forrest? Likely, maybe, possibly, but it's not like Forrest brought him there to say that this is the special place um, and then eventually hides a treasure there. Yeah, I don't think that's how it goes. By the way, this location that I have found, which has got which is clearly tied to the Arapaho people who are known as the dog eaters. Uh, the Cheyenne would call them that. And they, and that is because, you know, the Cheyenne were pissed at the Lakota and Lakota kind of broke up and had a different band known as the uh, La Agua, La, uh, L.A. Um, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Do I have it up here? Yes, I do. Let me spell it right. The O G L A L A. So let's see if I can even pronounce the meaning scattered to own, to one's own in Lakota language. So let's see here. The Oglaura pronounced Alawa, meaning to scatter one's own in Lakota language. Five are one of the seven sub tribes of the Lakota people who along with the Dakota, make up the Oshevi Sokovi Seven Council Fires. A majority of the Oglali live on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, the eighth largest. Right. And so where they originally came from would be over there in the uh, kind of between the Wind River and then Dakotas, start all in that kind of area in there. And that is Casper is involved in there. Casper is also part of uh, the the uh, uh, forty two parallel, forty second parallel. Um, they are an interesting people. I definitely think they were um, uh, talking very much about the dog star. Uh, the dog is a, definitely a part of Lakota and uh, Agla Agla people. Um, very interesting uh, deal. Now, if I'm on a slab, like on page 32, he's talking about he had uh, a piece of granite in his pocket and he's making marbles. Good luck with that. He's, uh, you know, that's what he's talking about doing. Well, if I'm on if I'm if I'm on that slab, my compass is reading 32, and I'm looking at a dog a big pointy rock pointing up and then that's where you find the dog star. I'm thinking there's more to it. Uh, oh, why Evelis Lou? Afternoon. Yeah, it is. Hey, Jason Dent. Senior Davio, Senior Davio, see. So the question remains, um, cobalt is not traditional, you know? but it is part of uh, what is you use to make uh, bronze. Normally bronze is uh, copper and tin, right? And then if you want different colors, they throw in cobalt, which was definitely something that uh, I heard Mr. Fenn was messing with. Not that he made this chest, just saying that these are the parts. Clearly it's made out of 80 and 20, right? With a handful of this, depending on the size. And that's what I, I've read for different strengths, for different colors, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, Eisenberg. 
what is black azimuth on that 32? Um, what is the azimuth? Oh, um, I got 3,200 degrees off of my uh, Lensic compass, which is what you use to do dead reckoning, right? You look through the little lens and it'll tell you that is also very much south. Um, uh, so I'm wondering, vitamin B2, oh, that's cool. So you get 112 degrees. I don't have my compass in front of me, but right, right on. For corrosion resistance, excellent. Yeah, that would make it last for bloody ever. So maybe that's what's in this. What temperature does water boil at? 32 degrees. Absolutely. 32 uh, Fahrenheit, right? Oh, it freezes at 32. And you know, it boils at, what is the temperature it boils at? Is it 200 and something? Probably 200 and something. So I guess what I'm saying is, is what is a part, right? What is a part? What is a, what is a, what are, what are the parts that get us to there? Oh, I see you're, you're saying the 212 is boiling. That's interesting. So what if Forrest found sacred land? And as a young man, he took away a couple of, uh, artifacts that are in said sacred land right now wouldn't that wouldn't that be a place that he'd want his ashes scattered i would imagine i would imagine that he's going to want to put back stuff he's taken from because i would imagine as a young man it's very cool to take this cool dog artifact this kachina looking doll this this some something that he's found there in these nooks that are in the rocks over there but then as an older man, you would think that maybe you're taking something from people, some people's history from there, you know, and you'd want to give it back. And that would make a lot of sense about the uh, Cody Museum. Uh, it has a really, really rich um, Native American uh, section. So it really talks about first people's First Nations people's uh, heritage and, and what customs meant and uh, not just fighting the white man, but uh, beyond that, right? And all this comes from the stuff I have found in the Santa Cruz Mountains, which all this is all the same heartbreak. In other words, I have gone directly to the elders who are still alive in the Santa Cruz Mountains and brought them all of the research I have found in the Santa Cruz Mountains of a uh, of of the same stuff you would find on the pyramids in in South America I have found in the on this this uh, location in the Santa Cruz and I'm wondering if Forrest didn't encounter the same thing but nobody cares. No one really gives a, a flying fuck about um, Native Americans and their history. I mean, it's um, the Spanish came and slaughtered more Native Americans than any of the Plains Wars, for sure. And then the Spanish were, were equally slaughtered by the whites coming over. And these big... Um, Rouse these big uh, mass slaughters of, of peoples is really not what you get to hear in our sterilized uh, history. Um, and I'm just wondering if 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 you didn't feel the same frustration. I don't know. It's been extremely heartbreaking for me, um, and I think that's why I'm really anxious for Jack to uh, come out and, and say what was his process. So I think you can, I think you could figure out where Forrest put this box from Google Maps. For instance, right now, if you open up Google Map, open up Google Maps just at, at Casper, and while you've got that topo view, uh, you want to pull back to about oh I don't know a couple thousand feet up, right? So you can see pretty much. Casper to the bottom part of the state. And as you look at that, you're going to see a big X, a big cross. 
that means 10, right? X is 10, I is 1, 5 is V, V. So I'm wondering if, uh, if just by doing that and coming down to Fort Fetterman Road, which is 61 coincidentally, um, you don't find something that says something like, oh, I don't know, how about old maids? You got an area that's known as, uh, where do I have it here? It's called Old Maids Draw. And then you find another thing that's called School Section Mountain. So there's some big chunks that are just information that is laying around that you've heard from the book. And this takes you to a very, you know, a road. And so from there, you can work. You're at 42. Already you're at 42, just like that. Well, what if there was something to back that up? Well, isn't it interesting that the two gypsies are at 42 and 150? 105. 105, which on the periodic table, coincidentally, is DB, as in sound, as in listening, as in hearing. Hear me all and listen good. The name of that is called decibel. Bell, decibel, decabel. So it's like you're hearing the very definition of decibel in 105. So 42 pounds, hear me all, listen well. The two gypsies in the book, you have a painting of a gypsy and you have gypsies at a campfire. Those are at pages, I think it's uh, 42, 43, and uh, 104, 105. So we have in the vague numbers that'll get you to this location. And then the poem itself, if you number it from the top and from the bottom, and you pay attention to the letter I, you will get more numbers that are taking you into a very specific area. I had to cover the chat because I can't think and read at the same time. So take the chest and leave my bones. Yeah, I always found that was interesting. Uh, bones, B-O-N-E, one, right? Um, alone, O O N E, which by the way is the top of the uh, periodic table. So it's interesting that there are there are these big things that are laying around and no one wants to address these. Now that the, the cat's out of the bag, I don't have to keep all this information or these cards close to my chest. I can put them out there and we can have a conversation about where they might, might take you to, right? Um, Father's Day, you know, that very date in itself, which is your solstice and the solstice marker. Does that play into this location? I happened to be there on uh, Father's Day, and there's definitely a, ca a shadow cast onto a very particular rock right when the solstice is happening. That's not too unlike what I've found in the Santa Cruz Mountains. As a matter of fact, it's more it's absolutely profound what uh, uh, solstice in the Santa Cruz Mountains, what I have found there. Um, as a matter of fact, here, let me go and give you a little link to that by touching this right here. You'll hear Dave McElhotten. So if you watch this, this is a real cheeky, yeah. If you watch that, you will see that what the CBS report did on this finding I have in the Santa Cruz Mountains. So anyway, take the chest and leave my bones. I always thought that was interesting. You know, is that a way of giving back? Take the white man's gold away from this location? So, oh, yeah, so moreover. So I have found this place where if you, where the uh, the number five, if you look up peanuts, number five, there's a very specific number. And if you click on the word creek in the picture frame on there, it will be that, you'll see that number. It'll be, uh, you'll see 4239 shows up right away. And then you have, I don't have an invite. I don't have Zoom anymore. I don't have the money to pay for Zoom monthly if I'm not going to use it. So I'm not inviting in. I'll, I'd love to go in. I would love to be uh, in a Zoom show where I can then share screen and then show you all these things that are parts and how they will take you to a location. And this location, I believe, would be the uh, the Agala La Agala La people's location that Forrest have found. 
I think it's very likely that this is where he found some artifacts. And like he says, take the chest, leave his bones. I think that might be a way to, to um, uh, give back to these people. Um, I think that might be a way he started his archaeological career. And he may not have felt really great about that. By the way, uh, in that language, H-E is the word for dog which I found very, very, very interesting. Um, so anyways, I'm thinking that there's more to the location. The chest, I believe, is probably a couple thousand feet from the location, which then makes that about oh, a thousand feet. I'll, call it, I'll easily say it's, it's 3,000 yards from where you parked the car to where I believe the chest was, right? So that's, a, that's what is that, a quarter mile? less than a half mile, because you know that Mr. Fenn at 80 years old, drink, bring, bring, you know, in a backpack bringing in this, this, this weight, um, that's, no small, that's no small deal. And yeah, I'm sure there's a, spo I'm sure there's a, 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 a marker there, and I believe that marker is going to be a fence post. This is why we're seeing post marks in this. Uh, because once you're on this land, you'll you quickly recognize that this barbed wire fence that you're traveling is very old. It's bloody ancient. And then when you quickly do the forensics on the barbed wire twist, they'll tell you that it's like 1850. So right away, um, I'm you know I, I believe that the uh, the fence post is part of a, a a line, part of the string, if you will, part of the uh, um, like musical notes, you're going to post and your wires going across. And I believe that's a lot to do with um, uh, uh, what's the line he says here. Uh, beginning with warm waters halt. Well, to me, that's obviously nothing to do with water temperature in that you're going to find a correct water temperature. That's the ambiguity on that is freaking endless and gives me a nauseating headache. So I do believe that he's referring to cool water. And since he says taken in the canyon down, well, that would that would also be another song, you know, um, down in the valley, and that's all sung by Roy Rogers. And Roy Rogers has got a horse named Trigger, and you're going to find on page 84 that Trigger is mentioned twice, and it's on the eighth line. So it's got a feeling that there's you know bigger hints afoot about what that is. And Trigger is the name of Willie Nelson. There's your Back, you know, there's your William again. Willie Nelson is playing. Um, that's the name of his guitar. The most famous guitar in the world is Willie Nelson's guitar named Trigger, which has a very large hole in it. And I believe that that is all part and parcel of the location that you have found out there. So, by the way, beginning on page 32, where he says he's got the, the stone in his pocket. The next, all the way to page 42, you're going to notice that there's a drawing, there's a, a drawing, I believe, on, uh, uh, I think it's like 38 or 39, there's a drawing. And then finally on page 42, he's sitting on some headstones and he's looking up. Well, what is he looking up at, at, at that, at, 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 a, uh, at a dead reckoning? Well, you're looking, you're look, your, your compass is pointing right at the rock, right? The big pointy rock, but you're looking at, the dog in the window. So when you're at 42 degrees with, well, anyway, he says it's a threshold moment, right? And the page that is and what you're looking at is all relative to the area that you are in. So I believe he really wanted you to understand this location. I'd love to take some people there. As a matter of fact, there's a thing that I want to do, and I'm really um, – very hesitant, but I'm really wanting to go back and film this place for the last time and leave leave my dog tags there and uh, and film it as a kind of a Forrest Fenn tribute. Because, I mean, the O-G-L-A people are not too much like T with Olga, right? And that's on page, you know, uh, I believe it's 119, and 119, well, excuse me, 118, 119 is OG right here on the periodic table. 
And then the number 294 that goes with it would be your heading, your uh, which jives with a compass heading. So so things that, that are that stand out to me is um, are, are through email. Roy Rogers through email. Um, I definitely think that uh, Trigger the Horse, Roy Rogers, is all a part of listening to the radio shows because the one that he's talking about uh, uh, was the was the dorky one? He was the he was he was really the ham. So uh, anyway, um, <sighs> trying to backdoor this from and getting Jack, you know, or, and finding out where Jack was and and all this sort of thing, I think, is just really not finding the keys. I mean, interesting that he we see a a rusted key. So that has to be an iron key for a bronze box. So the fact that the key is rusted and then you have iron on here. What is iron? Iron is going to be, where is iron? Manganese. Look at that. FE 26. That is a very interesting number because HE, the heavy load, is 26. So anyways, FE 55 on the periodic table when we have a rusted key, I wonder if that isn't, you know, a hint. Because we have we have items. What's this? Richard R. R. Dig it. <clears throat> like railroad, right? He was mentioning that. Um, yes, the, I'm sure, you know, Jack went right up to where this chest was and he picked it right up and, well, I would have, you know, gone nuts with a camera before I would have taken it from its place. After I would have, you know, lost my brain for about an hour. And then I would have gotten right to uh, being nervous. And I would have taken it out of there. And I never would have left it behind. As a matter of fact, I would not have let, let it leave my side for probably a week. Um, while I gather my thoughts and then implement you know, a lawyer and a uh, press agent and all kinds of stuff to then capitalize on the uh, Forest Van treasure, unlike what currently Jack is doing. I'm sure he's got a family and a, and a whole situation he doesn't want uh, harmed by the crazy people that, that think they are, that they own this rightfully. So my big question is, uh, do I go back out and film this area in order so you would see all these things that I'm talking about and reference the book simultaneously? Because when I was out there, the chest wasn't found, obviously. And I was uh, filming it for my own, um, what's the words I'm looking for? Reference. Um, and you know, what's interesting here, Richard, is that I've had um, friends of mine who are not involved in this in any kind of way. And they tell me you should go out there because they can't believe that there would be nothing left. So money versus reward. Well, for me being as poor as I am, money is its own reward. I don't know. I'm not good enough to write the story that this would be. So I thought maybe if I filmed it and then narrate over the, you know, actual walk, the walking of it. In other words, it's a short distance from where you park the car to where it is. So I don't know. I'm trying to justify putting together a documentary that I think equals, you know, the quest the quest that this is and, and what is a quest, you know, the quest is, is to find, you know, the blaze. And then what is the blaze? The blaze is what the star. I mean, it's a dog star. Does that come to it? I mean, um, my goals right now don't exist. I am my, my spirit is so crushed and I am so broken that I'm completely lost. And I'm, I got a counselor. I'm in a safe place. Uh, life is good for a while. Um, potential 
job even. I think I'm working in a coffee place. So I'm uh, not really knowing what to do. I have to get off because I'm starting to shake again. So get off and go eat. That's the kitchen. <laughs> um, oh. oh, a Blair Witch kind of a plot. Man, that's interesting. Man, that's where you go find my bones, right? I go leave. Yeah, I don't know. Leave my dog tags there. But you see, I think the right anthropologist would recognize the iconography that is there. But you see, no one, no one cares about ancient peoples anymore. Maybe Egyptians. But I don't see... Uh, anybody giving a flying fuck about Native Americans, you know, um, or history in any kind of deal. I mean, if it's not some kind of twittery, twattery fucking bullshit thing in your phone, I don't see 150,000 budget millions. <laughs> no, this could be done with probably, well, you know, like, you could, you could make a nice shiny little flick about this probably within, uh, I don't know, I'll say 20K. I know 20K would extend my life by five years. Native Americans are getting more attention now than ever. Really? Not out, not that I've ever seen. I mean, if it was, if there was something done like, a, you know, um, well, for instance, you would have to show Mr. Fenn's – Mr. Fenn's life is its own movie, right? I mean, the fact that he, he grew up rather poor, has a, has a father with, you know, at least, a, at least one degree, and then he uses his uh, – you know, he, he basically runs off into the Air Force because he doesn't have the money to go to the academy. It's pretty much like my father. Uh, my father lied and got into the Air Force at 16, and then – was first in his class as a dropout. I'm a high school dropout. And he was able to parlay that into um, being able to become a, a, a very big time mechanic within the Air Force. And he would have, my father would have worked on the jets that Mr. Fenn uh, had flown. It was right around that time. So that would have been 55, uh, that my father was 55 or actually 54 uh, was working on those jets that were in Thailand and not supposed to be there. So anyway, uh, take it as your right that whatever Jack, Jack or not. Huh. All oh, right on. Well, Richard, here's, here's the thing that will, will clench it is print out these things, which we'll find seventh grade. Straight A's till seventh grade. Oh, nice. Way to go. Um, yeah, I never had straight A's. <laughs> they just passed me along because they didn't want anything to do with me. And then I left because I had work in a car and I could get the hell away from the crazy people that I was called my parents. So consider this, um, Richard. Uh, print the periodic table. That's really very important. Secondly, um, uh, look up and print uh, the Fenway Park key, which is really interesting because the key talks about many things that were in Fenway Park. And then the numbers are just jaw dropping. Um, uh, secondly, make your own index. I mean, thirdly, make your own index. Now, when I say make your own index, you want to use the big capital first word letter. See, the as you look through the book, isn't it interesting that the first word letter is huge on the first line see the first line i think is important that we're using he, he's re he's reinstating that's the the thing line um and I, and then and now you'll know what chapters and numbers and these things will become extremely amazing when you look at a lancet compass that's the one that has a little lens in it and you look down and it's got the crosshairs that's for dead reckoning that's what you have when you turn all your instruments off in the airplane is all you have is a compass. That doesn't turn off. It's not, you know, there's a digital heading, but when you turn everything off in your airplane, 
you're a landsick compass in the air. You are doing dead reckoning. You're looking at that point and you're flying to it. And then you're looking at that point and you're flying. That's the same thing you're doing when you hold a Boy Scout compass in your hand that's got the little, the little lens. It's like 10 bucks. You can print that face off of, off of the internet. So that'll, um, science, yeah, I can take science. Speed read, skim for Ds. Yes, exactly. Uh, what the Ds are, are very interesting. And then, you know, what, is, what does a D mean? What does this D mean, right? A, B, C, D, right? Interesting what that could mean. I think it's in the key of D, um, like down tuning teachers with ropes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that's very interesting because uh, teachers with ropes, there are two, if not three, uh, uh, drawings that are from uh, Norman Rockwell. Uh, the Norman Rockwells and the dates, like the one that's over there, that takes you straight to um, that line in the poem again, um, uh, meek, right? Uh, no place for the meek is the same as home of the brave, which takes you to that song over there, which is all part and parcel. So your, um, oh, your study habits were, were scanning for or were D's. Ah, yes, I, I was happy to get a D. Um, I was extraordinarily uh, dyslexic. And they did, that wasn't invented when I was in high school. So I was called retarded my entire life. Uh, there's some, you know, he's smart in some things, like he can, you know, memorize, he can see a thing and draw it, or, you know, he can figure out any anything he touches, like a motor or a bicycle, I can take it apart and figure out why it's broken, put it back together. But that didn't, you know, in music, I was really good in music. I didn't play music. I could pick stuff out on the piano, but I had definitely had, there's a problem between my, on my left side from the head injuries I've had. So I can't really play guitar really well, but I can pick out stuff on a piano because you just push a button and you have a sound. <laughs> and I can remember where that sound is and then find the other ones a match. So I could do that. But find, you know, having to find the chord on was always much harder. Point is is that I wonder if Forrest didn't have a lot of similar traits that I have, that we all have, and that and he threw them all together in this beautiful, brilliant, architecturally designed, engineered uh, book and poem. Remember, the poem is in the book, so there, there is no separating the poem from the book. I don't know what, you know, when somebody says all you need is the poem to find it. Okay, well, I got a feeling that might matter within the last 100 to 200 feet that that comes into. Music in the Chase. Oh, that's very clever. As a matter of fact, Music Man or The Beatles or Jimi Hendrix or, um, um, Trouble, you know, that rhymes with uh, the, the Music Man, which had Ron Howard and Shirley Jones in it. And what's the guy? Robert Preston is the guy who is the main character. So, you know, I found that Music Man, because of Robert Preston, and then Richie Cunningham, Happy Days, and then all the great movies that he has been involved with. I mean, Ron Howard's life is really, truly amazing. So I'm thinking that these are all sharp paintings with Indians. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, the sharps. Yeah, the sharps paintings with Indians. That stuff is brilliant. That's just some, that is fantastic art. Mine is more like, you know, Peter Max, you know, more of a, not Warhol, but more of a iconography. I'm trying to, you know, put out the thing that's lacking in my life is love. So I paint big hearts and I put those out there. Right. So I'm thinking that he's trying to hint at these big things that were happening in history around him. For instance, Charlie Chapman, chapter, C-H-A-P, chap, chapters, right. Um, uh, the, the, the face that was on Skippy peanut butter, I believe was the same character that was in Chaplin's movies that then be, was in Adam's family, you know, A, A for Adam, Eve, A, W, Alpha, Omega. So I'm thinking there's interesting um, hints all through this. And I think um, doing a lab together where we all find these potential parts and where do they lead, you know, just finding the key word 
finding the keyword gives a lot of information. Um, a lot of information, but keep, because what you're going to find is when you find the word William in the lack of postmarks, if you add that all up, it comes to, uh, uh, what was it, 1988. I believe it comes to uh, these relevant numbers. I believe it comes just to the, to the number 88. And then 88, of course, is the weight of Ys. Um, there's just a, tr and 79 is what all of the, uh, it's like page, there's page numbers. You got the amount of chapters, the amount of page numbers that these are on. Um, and these are all equaling up to parts that give you, you know, clear hints that is no longer bias. You know, the lack of bias means that you're dealing with more precision. And that is what he says to do at the very top. Isn't it interesting that it says right there at the top, will lead. Now that's W-I-L-L-L-E-A-D. Did you know that um, Ledbetter, William Ledbetter, I mean, we got his name right there in that. And that's uh, 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 Ledbetter is, you know, the father of all rock and roll. I mean, that's the blues. Uh, his list of songs, um, I believe he actually has a song that's called Number Nine or Number Five. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, Pearl Jam, of course. That's why they're singing about, you know, Ledbetter's because he's <laughs> – He's the, he's the one that created everything they were coming from. And then that quickly comes to um, look up um, uh, Big Mama Williams, who is the one who wrote Jailhouse Rock, which then Elvis Presley made huge. But this large black woman who was a hardcore rock and roller, and she's like the mother of rock and roll. You can There's a direct line to Ledbetter from her. And so I do believe Mr. Fenn was wanting us to look at these historical things not just take stuff on on surface. He he said there was something deeper. And I believe in finding somebody who would be willing to dig to dig this historically down rabbit holes that get you parts that bring it right back to the poem, chapters, page numbers, drawings, postmarks. I think this uh the song definitely rocks. Cary Grant. Um uh, definitely uh, North by Northwest. Bang, right there. Um, uh, definitely uh, uh, Audrey Hep. I mean, there's definitely end uh, uh, um, endless parts of, of movies, including Ronald Reagan, that are in this. And I definitely think he's trying to get you to look at movie media because it was he grew up in the, in the golden age of movies, the golden – Pardon me. Age of of music, uh, 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 big band, big band, and then radio. Um, uh, uh, arsenic. I mean, if arsenic's in here, we're looking at Cary Grant because as as I have gone alone in there, as is thirty three, and that is arsenic, arsenic and old lace. Cary Grant. Um, I'll carry over, carry on, etc. Cary Grant, but. Um, um, what I'm saying is, is I think there was some, there's a lot of genius that is over, that is being overlooked and it's not my bias. This is, this is what's laying there that can be easily compared to uh, the periodic table. Um, uh, let's say golden globes, um, you know, words that show up, items that show up. Um, the fact that we have the Olympics involved here in that we have gold, silver, and bronze. Um, uh, tea with Olga, the colors that she's referring to in these different T's. And how many times are we saying T's, right? Letter T is uh, 117, T-S. And then the heavy load is 149. And so is O-G, which is right next to it. So just looking on the periodic table, you've got T and O-G. You've got, what is this? We're, we're, spell, we're almost spelling toga, right? We're spelling, we have O-G, and then over here is D's. Right. So if you put these together, we have dogs. I mean, there's there's an interesting bunch of little details that are dramatically being overlooked. Einsteinium is ES and that is 99. Page 99 is a strange killer little drawing with two big X's. You know, what does that mean? What is that trying to take us to? I mean, Einstein's not the only one that says imagination. Right. 
you want me to narrow it down? We'll see how many how many parts does it take to make your bicycle? Bicycle's pretty easy to ride, but there's a there's you know a hundred parts. You want to count all the ball bearings? You know what I mean? So OG Kush, <laughs> death death dog star. I like that. So I definitely think there's a lot of tie-ins from old movies, old music, you know, things he experienced with his daughters, right, who are my age, and they grew up, I grew up with Woodstock. Woodstock is a bird like he's shooting at. Who takes a bow? Robin, Robin Williams, Dead Poet Society, and he's the most famous bench in the world, is we're in good will hunting. There's your will as in Bill, Will, Willie, William. Billy, all those become, you know, part of your key word, right? Like Ted Williams. Ted Williams, a great baseball player who was a pilot in the same kind of era pre-Vietnam War. He would have definitely been one of the heroes in for Forrest to be, be looking at and then becomes a great fisherman. So Ted Williams, do look up Ted Williams HBO special. It's for free on YouTube, and it is outstanding, outstanding to watch. Um, jar locking ridge. Oh, architect. I like that. The cute ridges on a jar. Jesus, you got to narrow it down. I agree. There's lots of parts. For instance, he's using lots of parts because you, you, you are taking flavors of these as you go, right? Um, take the word William. Will I am? I mean, it starts out as one big long thing, and then if you know art, there's a thing known as deconstruction, where you start with a photograph, and then you you make it an you know impression of that. And that's far less information, but enough information to to see the beauty. And then modern art, right? And then you take it away to where it's just like extreme basic lines, and then. And then impression is not impressionism, and then expressionism is how you feel about that thing you are seeing, right? So this is forest. Where on earth are you going with all this? My point, Claire H, and that is so glad you said that, Claire, is that is that one just can't look at the poem and expect that to be all there is. You cannot you cannot just be looking around for a temperature of water. Warm water halts, cool water begins. Now, that, along with Taking in the Canyon Down, are two really big songs. Uh, down in the Valley, uh, that was, you know, if you look up there right where it says precision, it says Will Lee. Well, William Ledbetter sang Down in the Valley. Um, uh, cool, Cool Water was sung by Roy Rogers, whose horse was Trigger. Trigger is on page 84, twice. Look at the number that that's on, right? How do I come to that? Well, look on page one, two, three. You're going to see on page one, two, three, all a bunch of fish. We'll take your book and turn it sideways. It's a big letter E. E is on the periodic table. These things come in and, and, and um, what do you call it, uh, acknowledge themselves through the book and the poem. If you haven't made your own index, you need to, and you need to include the first line. And you're going to see parts that take you from just kind of letting your you know, from seeing this as a bizarre um, story of someone's life, which is bizarre. Too Far to Walk makes is a great memoir. Thrill of the Chase is bizarre. It kind of skips around and it's strange, right? Uh, whereas Too Far to Walk is more of a, a definitely, uh, you know, stories that are, are in his life. And you'll definitely want to open those two books up simultaneously. And you're going to notice that on page 15 of Too Far to Walk is where you find the index. And he has the word chapter 49 times for the 49 chapters. 49 shows up as IN on the periodic table, as I have gone alone in there. Periodic table is what I have up on the screen in front of me. So what I'm saying is, is that this is complex. But simple complexity. You don't need to know algebra. You don't need to know higher math. You just need to look at things. Look at 
Robert Redford movies because he's talk he says his bloody name. Robert Redford would have been better at Gatsby, right? He should have written Gatsby. And Gatsby is, you know, the, has the famous quote, which is on the ceiling of uh, Bill. There's your key word again, Bill Gates. And Gates is definitely something we would be looking for in a fence. On the ceiling of Bill Gates' house is the poem, or the, excuse me, the last line of the great Gatsby on his ceiling in his library. Now, I found that interesting that he's putting these two names, that he's that he talks about, you know, the great Gatsby and the writer. And then you quickly find, you know, th this, this cat that's got it on his ceiling. Very strange. Where else do we see Bill Gates show up? Well, don't we see the word office? Isn't that what Bill invented? Office? Just on the simple, with lots of windows right below it. So office and windows. ME. I mean, that's just one of the things that he came up with. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is express the creativity that we have seen Forrest uh, put into the book. And I don't see anybody celebrating that. I don't see I see lots of people trying to come at Jack. Well, if Jack has any part of what I'm talking about here, he's going to he's he's going to unveil all this in some future future I don't know thing book movie maybe nothing he's satisfied with the uh, the the monies that he's going to get from selling said gold or in his meeting with Forrest and the lawyers he was able to work out some kind of a a deal about the actual land that this is on. By the way, this land that I have found that has these pictures, that has these rocks that are cut out looking like dogs, um, must be, um, it's all on BLM land, first of all. So I'm wondering if that isn't relevant to this because it's on a triangle shaped piece of BLM land. And so I'm wondering, is there, there must be something about this, the, the peoples that were there. There must be something about that. I'm not sure. Well, we don't know. And, it, and it's unlikely that it was ever in Yellowstone. Here's why it's unlikely it was ever in Yellowstone. Yellowstone is at 44 on the latitude. And the, and the treasure chest is at 42. So why, why put it in Yellowstone? That's just not there's nothing that really says it would be there. I mean, if you're thinking warm water's got something to do with Yellowstone, of course, but that is too uh, trivial, trite. I mean, that's definitely a way to get teenagers and 10-year-olds to get mommy and daddy to, to say, we want to go to Yellowstone, which I think was a genius move, but I definitely think there's a deeper and, and thicker way. I think there's definitely more about it. Jackaroo. <laughs> it's interesting the items that were jackalope. Interesting things that we found in the box when it was open. Well, we don't know. We don't know what is you know you know the inventory that we see there on the desk, incomplete, right? But we do see Jack and we do see Forrest. Forrest is definitely wearing the bracelet. Um, I find it odd that you know Jack's not wearing any of this, and then it, and then. And I found it, you know, the list of what Jack has done to me is is nothing what I would have done. First of all, I would have not bothered an 80-year-old man. I mean, I definitely would have had the phone call and said, you know, Mr. Fan, yeah, I found this, and this is, this is what's going on. Can we, uh, you know, let the world know that it's been found so we can keep people safe? Um, I think that's important. But it could have been found after Forrest passed away, right? So he didn't have to even let the world know it was found. It, there's no reason you have to do that. So one, if I found it when Forrest was alive, definitely would have de would have secured publicist and uh, lawyer before uh, making an announcement to the world. Uh, I definitely would have uh, made an announcement. Uh, uh, celebrating the find uh, in a more uh, celebratory kind of way. Uh, definitely uh, 
would have let people know in advance my intentions of what I would do with the box and what I wanted to do with it right away. Um, if Forrest was alive, I definitely would have videotaped and would want to hear more stories about from Mr. Fenn, uh, what he was, you know, uh, motivates him to do this incredible thing. Where are, you know, you know, significant things in the book? You know, he could then say, yes, this was important. That would be important. This is important. Uh, this is a, you know, these are all parts you need to help find it. Um, I definitely would have filmed that for sure uh, and, and put that out. But do I, would I put that out right away? My intention would to have been make money off of said chest and or story best I can and then put it back out there. Reason being is it sells more books that are curing cancer, uh, that are going towards, you know, whatever children that that foundation was set up and is still found, set up to do. And so, you know, all the effort that was put into the book would then carry on. That would have been my intention uh, is to is to have it carry on um, the land, the people's land that is there that looks like is definitely related to the uh Agla'ala people and or the Lakota Sioux people that was there that are definitely referring to the dog star and what this, their, their uh, origins, you know, their religious origins are uh, um, attributed to. I definitely would um, put forth the, uh, the explanation and the wisdom of this towards the uh, 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 museum in, um, Cody and or make a, a, a documentary about this and spend the money to make that so to put that forth. So that would have been one idea. What was the key? And the key word was brave. I definitely think um, that is a word that is important, but I definitely think the word William is the key word. Now, what would be the non-biased way to find that word? In other words, we can all sit here and and dream up great words that would be. Um, and we definitely see triangulated coordinates because we're seeing a triangle on the frog and there's definitely other triangles that matter in this. But, um, love the beacon, that's cool. So point being is that um, a key word in this how would you find it? Did you make an index? And, and upon making an index, it spells out the word William. The absence of postmarks, when you take the first letter that is on those, that, it, that would be on your index, the first line, this spells out the word William. Now, it also gives you chapter numbers, and it gives you page numbers. And these all become relevant. There is no index. That's right. So the absence of chapter numbers and the absence of an index seemed like it would matter, right? How do we know it does? If you have too far to walk, you will notice that in bright red, he has said the word chapter 49 times, thus giving you yeah, absolutely. Brave and dead go together, uh, undoubtedly. But it's it, it doesn't lead you to people. For instance, what is Skippy's name? Do you know what Skippy's name is? Let's see if anybody can print it up in here. Let me get too far to walk. Well, actually, what's the point? This is all an exercise in utility. Yeah. Nope. Skippy's not the Skinner. Skippy's actual name is William Marvin Fenn Jr. Now, the relevance of that is that he has the same name as his father. Now, that means if you're the younger brother and you call your older brother Skippy, how long do you think it takes before, you know, 
he's going to beat the shit out of you. Or, I mean, you're not going to you're not going to call your older brother a baby's name of peanuts. I mean, Skippy became peanut butter. I think in the twenties and thirties. You can look it up. Is a clue to look at uh, gravestones. Yes, absolutely. Maybe it's less about the actual grave and more about the stone. Was Skippy a Boy Scout? <laughs> That's funny. Did the Boy Scouts and uh, yes, they are all over mining claims. You're not wrong. But does it get you to a very specific location? Does it take you with along with 42 to a spot? And maybe gravestones are what a is what this ancient land that I have found is. So how do these things link together, right? Skippy's actual name is William Marvin Fenn Jr. There's no way that little Forrest is going to call his brother Skippy without getting beaten because it is just not a name you're going to get away with as a kid, calling your older brother Skippy. I mean, look up Skippy. I mean, this is all about, see, what's what's lacking in a lot of, a lot of searchers is they don't do the work. Four says you have to do the work. Well, what, do you, what does that mean? Well, what's missing? We're missing chapter numbers for one. So if we're missing chapter numbers, what else is missing? Well, how about the whole front of the book? There's no index, right? There's no table of contents. There's nothing in the front of the book. It just begins on page four with a big letter A, and then page six is a big W. Well, what is that? It says preface. Well, is preface just one part of the word? Where is actual chapters coming up? Where, where, right? And then you have to ignore all kinds of other stuff. So, hey, Chasing Indy, how goes it, girl? I hope all is well. So the, the lack of what's not there becomes glaringly obvious. The fact that there are no chapters means you need to figure out what is a chapter number straight away. Um, the fact that you have page 15 in bold writing, what does that mean? You know? Maybe that stands out for a reason. I mean, does the word 79 land from the bottom up on the 79th word? Is that just a coincidence? Well, let's see. Then there, then if a few other things happen, then there wouldn't be a coincidence. Like where it says writ 10, if you count down, that's the 10th line from the bottom. 79th word is the ninth row from the bottom. So he's telling us to look at lines. He's telling us to pay attention to words and lines, like fishing line, like string. These are all lines that umbilically connect things together. You cannot look for, you can't ignore these things. You want to see a big letter, look on page one, two, three. Turn the book sideways, it makes a big letter E, right? Now, do you think it's just a coincidence that that's on page one, two, three? Um what is the relevance of chapter 21? That is farther on the banco. What is a banco? A banco is a bench, right? Um, so what would be the relevance of a, of a bench, right, on chapter 21? Well, if you look at Fenway Park, you'll notice that there are – there is a thing at Fenway Park that starts from Ted Williams. There's your keyword, Williams, right? Ted Williams knocks the ball 500 feet to the red seat, like the red ink. So what is that seat number? Well, it's 21. Happens to be, happens to be, again, section 42. No, excuse me. It's section 42, row 37. Interesting that on page 37, what chapter is that? I don't have that one remember. Oh, it's the eighth chapter. Uh, th that is the one that has the cow and the, and the kids and everything there. They're playing cowboys and Indians, right? 
Well, look on page 39. Page 39, the eighth word says eight. Well, now that's eighth chapter, eighth word, and it says eight. That sure is a lot of eights, right? It's not just what he ate as in eating. No, it's referring to, let's say, heavy load. We're 39, and it's 88. On the periodic table, that's the letter Y. If you've been wise, now you've just left bias, right? Bias is me thinking that warm water is a temperature somewhere, right? Now you've just left bias. Now you're dealing with more precision. And this precision will then get you places because we know 42 is an important number, very important number. It is, after all, Jackie Robinson, right? And 42, and also, by the way, Ted Williams, his jersey number, which is retired, is number nine. So since he's talked about Babe Ruth and how he was, his name was exploited and he made no money on a candy bar, right? And then they changed the name and blah, blah, blah. That's the same thing that happened with Skippy Peanut Butter. Skippy was a cartoon character, and then that got turned into – Skippy peanut butter. So now we got peanuts. Peanuts first shows up in the Saturday Evening Post. Now there's a whole bunch of little connections right there. So what would be the home of Brown? The guy that the home of the guy that wrote peanuts because that's Charlie Brown. Well, if you look up five 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 nine five four seven two, that's the zip code of Charles Schultz. Charles Schultz who was the creator of Peanuts, used that as a character in Snoopy Come Home. Snoopy, a dog. Now we're back to dogs, just like Willie. Willie being one of the key words. Now, that kind of stuff is where I want to, I would like to talk about. But I can't talk about this with anybody on air because they instantly don't want to stay on the key word. They want to show me... Endless other things that just deflate me and make me never want to do this ever again. So I'm thinking the only thing I can do is to actually go out to this location, film it in congruity. In other words, as you come onto the property and how the walk you take, what you walk past, and then what you walk to. Remember he says you walk past Many people have walked past it. I fully understand what he's talking about. Now I can read. I can't think and read at the same time. So why does he say this number 500? Because Ted Williams knocked that ball 500 feet to a seat 21, chapter 21, Banco. We are seeing the home, like home plate. What's the last line? It was a religious experience burning all of that, all of the old stuff. And so to try to make me look at other things. No, I've already spent enough years. There's no changing my mind, Claire, on this because you said you would go in confidence. Confidence means precision. No ambiguity. Very little bias, if any, at all. And this is what I'm trying to put out there. And I'm showing you and I'm giving you the information so you can find these things and more on your own. But no, nobody wants to do that. They want to they want to go up Jack's butt with a microscope and who to talk to, email this, email. Who gives a shit? The man found it. There's a picture of him with the freaking box, right? He says there's nothing left behind. I pretty much have to believe that. I'd like to not believe that. But, you know, like page 107 on Too Far to Walk, we're seeing dog tags. Now, what's the relevance of page 107? It's the weight of silver. So I definitely think, you know, do I think that there is something left behind? Do I think Jack overlooked anything? No, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I mean, it's bizarre that he should go back to the hotel and drink a box of wine and then go back out and uh, pick it up the next day. While I agree, no one would be right there. 
I sure as hell would never have left it. So I just found some of the things he said really uh, strange. But the precision I have, and I'm not showing any of the precision. I'm merely having a nice little chat for 90 minutes. Um, and because why? I'm trying to uh, be healthier about this. My obsession with this probably has cost me my life, actually. So I don't know. Part of me thinks that the weather is coming up to about a, to a good point in time to go out and film this. So you actually are seeing, because I mean, one has to think, well, what are the things in the book? Well, what's a blaze? Something on fire? Is a blaze pointing at a star? What if you got a rock that looks like a dog that's pointing up in the air? And when you stand on 32, page 32, which would be 3,200 degrees, you're looking exactly at the dog star. I'm wondering. I wonder. I don't care about Jack. Well, I only care about him to the fact that he's the finder. And then what will he do with this information? And what is the information? What are the parts? What is the uh, amount of information? I mean, it's, it's, there's an insinuation that he spent very little time, and I don't think that's true at all. I'm thinking that he, that he did. Let it go, Gabio, Mr. Audio. Maybe he had the treasure and he left the chest. No. He walked away. Looks like he took two trips like Forrest. Let it go. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So Jackie is looking for a warm waters halt. My warm waters halt is 42. If you've been, so what is, in other words, what happened in 1942, right? There's something about what happened, right? Wyoming is 42. In other words, the weight of the box, 42. Think about it. That box is intentionally weighs 42 pounds, right? Because he's putting in little gold stones. Tink, tink, tink. I mean, it's intentionally. Whether or not it actually weighs 42, he's told us it weighs 42. And him telling us that it's 42 pounds is what's extraordinarily irrelevant. It's bronze, silver, and gold with other bitchin' diamonds and things in there, right? Other artifacts. But it's bronze, silver, and gold, just like the Olympics. You can go down that little road of, you know, what happened in 1936. Oh, look at that. That's Jesse Owens. So in other words, his life, you know, his year of what? Depression was the, the year of depression, right? He lived through the depression. And how did that impact his life? Tremendously, right? All the other stuff. So that's, let's go. Oh, yeah. Yo, Richard, you want to take, you want to go out there? Want to meet me and Casper? See, we got snowfall now. I was thinking I could. There's a potential job I have here in town, so that means I should be on that job. So that means I could possibly have in two weeks. I could be gone for a week, and I have the money. So keep it in mind if you want to go out there, Rich. I can meet you in Casper and film it and leave something behind. So. What does it mean when Forrest says you have to do the work? What's missing? That would be the work. There are no chapter numbers. There's not page numbers on important pages. How come there's no page number on 15? Now, I think he's trying to say that that's important. I mean, P15 on the periodic table. I mean, I think he might be trying to hint at something. 
golds on the periodic table. And it's 79. On page 15, we're clearly seeing 79. So on and on it goes, right? I mean, here's something. Who's where is the uh, uh, meet Casper? You want to go to Casper? Oh, no kidding. Well, we can meet in Casper and I can. It's two hours, this location from Casper. And by the way, Casper is mentioned in the book. It's not just the Holy Spirit. Right? <clears throat> Ow. <clears throat> Lots of pain. Found out that I have arthritis. So, anyway, um, I think. Um, I think we could, yeah. I think what I'll do is I, I'll, I'll, what is this? Today is the death of my sister, May 6th. May 5th is when she died. So anyway, let's uh, let's add uh, two weeks onto that. So that would be uh, Mother's Day. Oh, that's very appropriate. So neither Mother's Day or June 6th. Or excuse me, June twentieth. That would be a good time. Um, I must go. That's very, very kind, Claire. Very kind. If you still still are interested in this chase and you want to have fun, five things you got to do. One, make your own table of contents. That's right. Go through every page. This is a pain in the ass. And make your own make your own table of contents. Include the big capital letter that is the first line, the first word, include that. That's very important. Secondly, include whether or not there is a postmark. The lack of postmark gives you a chapter number and a letter. Ding, 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 ding. And what you're going to find rapidly at the end of all this, as you scan over the information that becomes a table, because he says table three times in here that are really important, the last page especially, you're going to notice that page numbers and chapters jive with a compass. And now you've got to print the face of a Lansic compass. This is the compass that has got the little, these are two parts, right? Table of concept, print your own compass, okay? Because you're going to notice there's an inside and an outside ring. It's not just 360. You're going to, not, you know, 90 is definitely east, but it's also 15, right? So there's numbers 15 and 16 become what become east, and that's 16,000s or 1600. It's more precise. So those two things will get you past bias is the great noon listening, listens. I don't know what that means. Great noon listens. All right, so, so yes, so you need... You need those two things, and that will give you a tremendous amount of information. Secondly, I would say – well, see, now you got your compass and you have that. That will take you to all kind of places. I would say watch Goodwill Hunting, right? And then you also want to watch uh, Dead Poet Society, you're going to notice that there are tremendous references about what Forrest has been talking about, Carpe Diem, for sure, in Dead Poets. You're also going to notice that uh, the page that the first chapter lands on is 21 in that book, which I found extraordinarily fascinating. So there are hints within that movie that Forrest is referenced to. I mean, Meeps is one of the characters in there, which I found really curious. But mostly, you're going to see the word Williams. William as a uh, as a key word. Well, that's his brother and that's his father. And then that takes you to Shakespeare. That would be uh, William Shakespeare. That takes you to uh, John Williams, a composer who's, who's done bloody everything. Uh, Buffalo Bill. Bill is William. So you're going to see all these things. Now, Robin Williams is the one that stands out huge. Now, how do we know he's talking about Robin Williams? He played Popeye. When he talks about Whippy Burger, that would be Robin as well. I mean, Popeye is yet another reference to cartoons, and that takes you to Skippy, who was a cartoon. And that's, not a, re and that's a real short step to Peanuts, right? Now, how do we know Peanuts? Well, we're seeing P on the periodic table, and we see nuts, blah, blah, blah. It shows up as in 
Skippy peanut butter, as in, what was another one that was big? Oh, the home of Brown. Who's Charlie Brown? But in the but a character that's in Peanuts. Now, if the creator of Peanuts, whose name is Charles Schultz, puts has uses his address as a character in one of the cartoons, wouldn't that be the home of Brown? And that would be very precise. There's no ambiguity. There's no wishy-washy about this, right? So as you look at your Google map of Casper and you're at 2,000 feet out looking down at this, you're going to see a big, huge X, right? X marks the spot. Well, and the simplest thing is look down into one side. You're going to notice that right there on the road that is next to this is road 61. And that's where he's got his thumb in the air, right? And he's got the fire. And he says, over there, the cartoon in the background is yet another uh, Saturday evening post that'll take you to um, Norman Rockwell's over there. Now, all these parts will get you to an area where you're going to see a face on Indian Creek. Indian Creek. Now, that's right there in the poem, right? It says... It says in creek right there in the poem. It says something, something, blah, 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 in the creek, I believe. And so you want to print five copies of the poem. You want to print four or five copies of page 15. Just photograph it, put it through your printer. And you want to start circling the word I in the poem. And it's going to draw a face. You want to start circling and drawing lines in it like it's a potential map. You want to do that on page 15. You want to do that on page 99. 99 is Einsteinium. Well, he said use your imagination, right? Imagination is greater than, than all this stuff. So, Czar, dude, hope all is well out there, mate. Right on. Look at that. There he is. Cool, mate. So all these things, you know, become important. These are all subtle, subtle, subtle hints. You know, why are these photographs all kicked off at seven degrees? Why are they kicked off at seven degrees? Is that six degrees or seven degrees? Is that Will Smith, six degrees of separation? He talks about art in fourth grade being the most inspirational art that is nearest Chagall, let's say. I mean, there's all kinds of art references in this. One can't just stick, and there's more. One can't just look at, at something that he says as face value. Not at all. So it sounds like there's a little bit of interest to uh, meet in Casper. If there's people that want to meet in Casper and go out there, then I'll tell you what I do. Before, before we meet, <sighs> Oh, Jesus. Um, I should do a video with all these parts and how they are in consecutive. I just didn't want to spend all that. Uh, 135 miles from Casper. Um, I tell you what, Richard, look up Fort Fetterman Road. There's FF, just like on the front of the book, right? It says FF. Fort Fetterman Road. Follow Fort Fetterman Road. That turns into Road 61. It goes 16, 61. These numbers all become relevant in the book consecutively. But why don't you look up that? That's your big Google map. And you'll see that off of Indian Creek and you're going to love this. Um, what do you call those pants? Corduroy Creek. You know, when he slid down, I was wearing corduroy. He's wearing corduroy pants, those overalls. Those are those that was known as corduroy back then. And the beaver ponds that are in this location are really intense. Indian Creek, Corduroy Creek, lots of – these are really short, small creeks. They only exist, uh, you know, seasonally. If it's really dry, these creeks will run dry. Um, well, maybe. I don't know. It was really dry out there, and they still exist. I don't know. It could be spring fed. Point is – is look up Fort Fetterman Road, especially the uh, woman that was here earlier. Yes, Richard. But Claire, 
Tef, you want to go? Definitely. Let's do that homework and then, you know, hit subscribe and you'll see me come up about this. But definitely look up Fort Fetterman Road. Um, it's pretty close to that distance, see, 50 to 100. Yeah, it's a two-hour drive. I think it's un inside 100, 100 miles from Casper. Casper's got the better hotels, by the way, and some better food as opposed to the town of Douglas. So from Casper, you drive up, and then Fort Fetterman Road, um, turns into a dirt road and you are traveling between two national forests and we will be getting, we'll be taking a walk to um, Indian Creek. Now, as you look, Claire, at Indian Creek off of Fort Fetterman Road, which is Road 61, okay? You want to follow, look at the, you'll see a little face, the silhouette of a face. What? is the significance of that of that Norman Rockwell with the face in it. It's got a it's called silhouettes. It's a thing that we don't see anymore. And it's cut out with scissors. The rusty scissors, I believe, were hinting to that. There is a silhouette face that's on the back of the shelf of knowledge. Right? Knowledge is a shelf of books, knowledge. Um, so you'll see the shelf of uh, books and right back there with all the cats running around. This is the Norman Rockwell. I think it's on page 28, 6. I can't remember. You'll see that. One of the early chapters. And that is a reference to the silhouette right here. Touching the nose of Washington. The, the face of coins. Iron Tail is who is on the buffalo nickel. Iron is shows up on the periodic table. Um, Iron Dog was Will Rogers' ranch. Wiley Post, Will Rogers died putting in uh, a postal route, which gets us to postmarks, etc. There's a whole other link there, but I'm going to speed things up to Fort Fetterman Road. You'll see a little face. Now, as you click in more and more, you're going to see the word creek will land right on a log. And when you click on it, you will see the number that is uh, Charlie Brown. So as you find just under the nose, that looks like a creek, you'll see the word. As you click in, the word creek will always land on that log, always land on it. You click between the E's, like the word creek in the poem, you're going to see heading for Yellowstone area. I'm not kidding. When are you doing this? Are you doing this today? And are you taking the kids and and are you doing this alone? What are you doing? Your end is my start. Well, this is this is this the 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 end of my start. So this place on Fort Fetterman Road is the uh, basically where you get out of the car, which I believe is. And once you find the blaze, that's the end of the quest. And now you've got, now you've got a whole bunch of other stuff to do. So everyone thinks that if you found the blaze, you're done, right? Your quest is over. Well, the quest just means you found the home. By definition of, uh, you've left your home. Now, if you, you go out and find your home, so that would be the home. So what's the home of Brown? I know it looks like I have it backwards, but I have this. So if you're if you're standing, if it's at that threshold moment, right, that he has in the book there, if you're standing on that log and you're looking up at Snoopy, are you not standing on the home of Brown? So I'm saying that there is a way to verify before you drive away. And you don't even know you're going to see a dog until you get there. You don't, there's nothing in Google Maps that lets you see these dog images. You will definitely find uh, a couple of interesting rocks. Uh, you will definitely see everything that is described in the, uh, the curve that is the uh, um, gypsies dancing around the fire. The fire is what you take your heading off of with your compass, and that becomes the page numbers. Bang, bang, bang. For sure. Now, look at that. The center of a focal point is called a home. Wow. That's really genius. So 
This is true. I mean, that is home plate. Fort. Fe I mean, look at that. Um, Fenway Park, home plate. That would be the focal point of this design. That is really genius. And then what do you know? Seat 42 actually shows up on your compass as 42 degrees. In the, and it's just amazing. So not only are you on 42nd parallel, which is Fort Fetterman Road is clearly on that. And then you're going to 42105. It's actually 4239. And then you're going to 105, Two. You'll find that that is the what happens when you click on it. So, Willie is dumb as a rock. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, you know, that is a very interesting point that they should say that, Jackie. <laughs> now, what would, so what would make, so we've always agreed that this location, something about the location had to be special. Well, what if he found Native American origin location that there, that it was a sacred place for these people? And white men wouldn't know it. So there's nothing specialized about it. A compass isn't specialized. The Prairie Lake Table is nothing special. Fenway Park, these are just things you can easily click on that show up. Um, I don't need to know the Prairie Lake Table. I've memorized a big chunk of it because of this. I've memorized big chunks of the book. But there's no, you know, I'll, you just aim a compass. Yeah, I'm, I'm Like if I hold a compass right here and I aim it at the red flag behind me, that's dead reckoning. Uh, he talks about, you know, dead men. He talks about turning off the instruments to his airplane. Uh, well, oh, Chicago. You're going to drive through Casper. And this is going to happen tomorrow? Dude, I got you. I could put you on a little adventure if you want to go out there. It'll freaking blow you away. Because there are grave markers, by the way, off of Fort Fetterman Road. Now, you're going to find Fort Fetterman is right there above. I'm sorry, I'm speaking to you. As you go to um, Douglas from Casper, I think that's like just under about an hour away, Douglas is, right? Okay, so you're going to notice the sign for Fort Fetterman. Well, they have moved the fort to that location. Where it originally was is out there off of Fort Fetterman Road, which is also Road 61. So as you look at your, your map, you'll see Fort Fetterman Road, and then it's going to come to an intersection where there was this campground there with this big freaking X's in the ground. You can't miss this big, big X. And right at that intersection... Just, oh, man, it's not even a, like a half mile back on the left as you're heading for that intersection, you're going to see a peace sign, an iron peace sign. And then you're going to see uh, a feller uh, this uh, out of iron, uh, which is a grave marker for some feller that died out there. So I found this interesting that this is right at Indian Creek. Now, the sign for Indian Creek is laying down, but there's only three or four creeks that you pass over on his way to Colorado from Chicago. I will leave from here. Oh, so you're coming. So your buddy's meeting you in Colorado and then you're going to drive to Casper. And then from Casper, you're doing, you're going off to Yellowstone. Cool. Yeah. This would, this would probably divert you too much, but it is BLM land. You can camp out there for free. Careful. will be, yeah, we'll be worth. Yeah. See that Richard. Those kind of things like that in the poem. There's a whole thing of deconstruction in the poem you can do. Will effort. I mean, it's true. Um, uh, what's interesting is the uh, uh, look at where it says uh, you've and then I've, I, uh, comma, V, E. Well, that's like 15, I and then VE, right? I mean, that's like 15 right there. And that's not line 15. It's not word 15. But it's interesting um, where it could mean like Burl Ives. 
who is the one who did that uh, froggy song, who um, who's also sang Down in the Valley. So there's references like that you can take apart through this book easily. By the way, printing the poem and then drawing a center line is 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 really amazing what happens when you draw a line to the book. When you start then on a, and then so you leave that one alone. So then from the period from gold, you draw you draw a line from the dot in gold and you go it'll go through the you know, it'll go through two E's, it'll land at the very top. In other words, there are strange little anomalies that I think that are they're different. Is Fort for the place like F Troop? Um, F Troop is interesting because of who the people were that were in F Troop uh, in the era that that came in. That's also Hogan's Heroes era. Um, the actors who are in it were old time vaudevillians, some of them. So it's it's who's in like F Troop, which is funny. Um, um, so for instance. As I have gone alone in there. Now let's look at that. As I, uh, that's arsenic, that's emodium, and that's iodine. Um, 49 is Indian. Uh, Skippy, by the way, is on page 50. And on here, that's tin. Now is that Rin Tin Tin? That'd be a famous uh, uh, radio show and then TV show. So, you know, I do believe there's stuff like F Troop. I think there's, I don't think it, it won't take you very far. It'll take you as far as, oh, it's interesting who played in that. Um, here's an interesting thing. This one is really interesting. Um, Douglas Preston is the guy who was in Music Man. Uh, this, we're headed for trouble. Uh, that rhymes with pool, and then we got pool, and then it rhymes with trouble. You want to watch that movie, or at least that rap where Doug Preston does what's called the uh, trouble pool, pool to trouble rap. And it's on YouTube for free. You can watch it. And what's interesting is he talks about knickerbockers and all that. Well, that's the very image that you're seeing Mr. Fenn, you know, uh, father Fenn in the last photograph of him on page 79. Um, you're seeing him dressed in knickerbockers and button down shoes. And he's standing on the edge of a sidewalk with a fence and all this kind of stuff that with a, a, a with a comic book in his back pocket. So there are references. Now what's, what's Doug Preston music man, Ron Howard is the little boy in front of the 79 trombones. And right. Uh, the love song that Shirley McLean, Shirley, not McLean, Shirley from uh, the Partridge family is in that, right. The song that she sings is the song the Beatles played on Ed Sullivan. They did not do their first original song, If I Fell in Love With You. That was a hit from Music Man that surely made a big hit that they that the Beatles did on Ed Sullivan. You know, like the White Album. Uh, uh, you know, how, how can the Beatles not influence pretty much everything, right? Uh, they were amazing. Uh, the Hills Go With Valley. Valleys and hills, absolutely. You don't have valleys without hills. Uh, um, Taking in the canyon down. A canyon is a valley, right? So um, um, down in the valley. Who sang that? Look up. Look up. Here's another good one to look up. Is uh, William Ledbetter songs. Uh, totally uh, amazing. The uh, first songs that he made help. Oh, now that's interesting. The Wells Fargo wagon is uh, coming down the street. Um, now, this area that we're in, by the way, is where the pioneers came across. This is part of the Pioneer Trail for sure. This would be where, uh, um, you know, the book he talks about, uh, uh, Russell, he talks about that. that book. This area definitely has got drawings, uh, hand drawings of the area, and Fort Fetterman is for sure part of that, by the way. So when he says he has that in his pocket, um, pocket is also what is on a pool table in Music Band. There you go. Now Wells Fargo coming down the street. Outstanding whammy. Cheap up, cheap a hop. <laughs> um, so maybe we can get some other people. You know, Czar, uh, what is this? 
everyone should still be involved in the chase. The treasure chest would be had been great, but the bonus compares to the secret he holds. Now, that's fascinating there, Zar. So what you're saying is you have a, a belief, an understanding, a commitment that there is more to the chase, not the chase, the chest, the chest location. Now, I've been saying this for a while, slang, I get it. Now me, now French, don't post a login. Oh, very good. So, sorry, I don't disagree. And I think that uh, Whammy here, I think I think most of the people in here will agree. We can say this by voting, saying yes, that the location is significant. And what would that be as far as significance? Ah, you know, significant to, uh, uh, Jesus Christ modern human beings today um, uh, relevant to Forrest in his life who was a, a amateur archaeologist uh, it, we don't know um, is Jack aware of this uh, is it possible to know you're in the right location by knowing where Fenn wanted to die uh, these are interesting points. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I think I think they're all relevant. I don't think we can say that that uh, these things do not matter. For instance, Brown versus Board of Education, I think, is as important as Charlie Brown. Um, right? Because Charlie Brown makes his first appearance in the Saturday Evening Post. Um, we're seeing postmarks. You're seeing Saturday evening post. A post is what you have on a barbed wire fence. And I think the barbed wire fence that you follow in is all very, very important. Uh, I don't think Forrest needed to go all the way into said location. I think he could have, I mean, if we have a silhouette of a face, eye to eye, could be simply where he could have put this, is right where the eye is. Now, that's really close to where he parked his car. You know, I think there's a bunch of little tiny things like that, real subtlety things that come into play. I think finding out what the parts are are, and, and, and showing them without bias. Now, what does that mean? That means it has to come to some kind of precision. Precision equals out some kind of number. Chapter numbers, page numbers, postmarks, periodic table, gold, silver, bronze, tin, aluminum, uh, Arsenic. I mean, arsenic is the is AS. As I have gone, there's arsenic right there. Uh, uh, NE is a big one. That's ten on the periodic table. Uh, HE. Uh, he says he, <laughs> which is number two. Um, heavy loads, atomic weight. So, hear me all. Listen good. Is one o five on here? So if you take the weight and listen. That's 42 and 105. That takes you right in this little area that I'm talking about. Just those big gross things. Jack easily could have figured that out. I mean, uh, uh, easily could have, have, have come to those conclusions and came up with a couple more things that landed him in a place, and then he just scoured, scoured an area. I mean, this is all possible. Bridge on the River Kwai shows up because of the actor. Um, bridge is also a part of a musical term between this chorus and that. That's a bridge. Um, uh, um, uh, I think there are bridges that are uh, fallen trees that are going to take you over stuff. Um, I think all this stuff plays a part. Um, Dead Poet Society, I thought, was the most glaringly obvious one because he says tear out the front of the book. And there's no front of the book to the thrill of the chase. And then it's Carpe Diem, Seize the Day. This is a book of days. So I was seeing um, all kinds of little stuff like this are, are becoming are what's relevant. I think when one takes these kind of items in their totality, it becomes a lot of parts. And then they take you to places. Beaver Dam is used. Absolutely. Um, it creates a pond which the fish get big enough that you'd want to fish there. And if you look on this, this Google map of Indian Creek, you're going to see clearly 
uh, two or three beaver dams. And one of them is interesting that it shows up on Google Maps, but is no longer there in reality. The upper ones are. And a beaver dam has an island. So an island is an interesting thing because that has come up for a lot of people as well. The uh, Beaver Lodge is, a, is an island to cross over the creek. Yeah, you need a log to cross over the creek to walk on the dam. Um, uh, doesn't take much to cross a creek. You can die crossing a river, but it's nothing to cross a creek, right? Well, I've now hit the... Uh, high uh, very high pain level and i i can't just i gotta pound some groceries <laughs> um and uh and so it means i need to go buy some food so uh, i i i'm i'm really happy I, i'm hoping that at the very least this is uh uh um got some curiosity up in a different way of looking at things um if folks want to uh, meet in casper at, at some date uh, and then and go out to this location, boy, that would be super, super, super exciting. Because um, uh, I do everything alone, and that's really kind of wearing on me. So right on, Richard. Um, and and ignore this. I like that. Is uh, um, you know, Casper would be great. One oh eight. He's at one oh eight. He's at forty two and one oh eight. Um, right on, mate. I think that's terrific, Richard. Um, um, <clears throat> thank you very much, um, everyone, both riches. <laughs> Isn't that a great name? Your name has wealth. Your name is rich. <laughs> like Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor. I mean, isn't that referring to the diamonds? Uh, diamonds are forever. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, when there's diamonds, you always think of the of Elizabeth Taylor and diamonds, right? She's, she was big on that. Um, right on, Rami. Um, I'm. I sure hope. You know what I'd really like is a, is some uh, information about Native Americans and uh, uh, Dog Star, which, by the way, is the brightest star in Sirius. Um, so I'm thinking that there might be something about that. So much love to everyone. Thank you very much. Um, I'll put my email in here if there's some uh, information you want to pass along. If anybody has a, a Zoom channel and you want to uh, put that up and I can join in and then I can use the uh, share screen, I can share all the reference material. Uh, Azar, um, if you want to take a really bitch and drive, you can actually go from Casper on Road 61, which is Fort Fredelman, back to uh, is it Cheyenne. Or actually back towards Denver, which is 25. You're going to take 25, and that's going to land you on Casper, and then from there on to uh, to uh, on to uh, uh, Yellowstone, which is cool. But this dirt road is truly uh, breathtaking. No tourists, man, because um, you're going to be swamped with tourists out there. Um, <laughs> so it's your call. Um, I think you have my text. Be in touch, mate. Have a great time. And uh, thanks for uh, stopping in, everyone. Um, be safe. Much love to everyone. Namaste. Be well.